Now you done fucked up. Now you done fucked up. You have fucked up now. It is now that you have chosen on this day to fuck up. You know, something tells me this episode was designed to hit you right in the feels between the reconciliation between Mob and Ritsu and the stuff between Reagan and Mob at the end of the episode. It was definitely designed to hit you straight in the chest cavity. So the episode starts off with Reagan heading towards the claw facility via taxi. And that let me know right then and there he's not the leader of claw because the leader of claw would have come in something a little more extravagant like a helicopter or hell, even a boat via land, psych psychic cruising the land in a boat. It can happen. So then that let me know right then and there that the not so fantastic five is still not so fantastic sense and energy from Reagan. Fuck out of here. The only reason that Reagan got into that facility was because of the guards being dumbasses. And that's one of the coolest things about this episode because Reagan usually uses Reaganomics. See what I did there? To hustle people, but in all honesty, he didn't really hustle them. They hustled themselves and they let him in. When in reality, he was just there to talk to Mob about work. I really did get a kick out of how Reagan was reprimanding the guards for their evil doing. Just being like, hey, this is a crime. You can't really do that. And at this point, I'm noticing that Reagan is literally lecturing them on what they're doing wrong. And I'm sitting there like, they're probably gonna be good guys after this, just normal citizens after this. But it's as we noticed last week, nobody just leaves Claw. So they might end up destroyed, who knows. Another thing I enjoyed about this episode, and I kind of referenced it earlier, was Mob's flashback of Ritsu essentially getting them out of the woods. And initially, my first thought was, why did they wait this long to show this flashback when Mob has already stated that Ritsu's smarter, he can do things that he can't. And it was for two reasons. One was to tell Hanazawa that, yo, I may be a powerful esper, but I'm not a thinker. That's my brother. I, I just fuck shit up. And the second one kind of branches off of the first one because Mob more than likely would have said that anyway without him having that little flashback. But I think the flashback was also used to show us and remind us that Ritsu is a thinker and he'll know what to do. But after all that's said and done and Ritsu repents for what he's done, which I'm finally glad that he did because that's a nice little step in the right direction for the Ritsu character because he was really kind of annoying me these past few episodes. I won't, I'll give him a pass on the last episode, but the one before that, he was getting on my nerves. Reagan comes in with the flunkies and is just like, Mob, what are you doing here? And everybody in the room except Mob and Ritsu is thinking that this is the boss of Claw. And I feel as though the scene was used just to make fun of us and the way we reacted last week when we saw Reagan come in and the Not So Fantastic Five sensing him. And I'll give you that. Well, well played. Well, well played. You got me. You you mess you mess with my brain, and you can make fun of me in this episode with this scene. I give you that. So Hanazawa thinking that Reagan is literally the boss of Claw and Mob's master thinks, hey. I can ask him to get us out of here. But as they're leaving, they run into the real Scars members, and then Reagan then gets exposed for not being the leader of Claw. And Hanazawa, knowing that they're about to be in for a fight, tells Mob, hey, handle this, please. And at this point, I'm just like, Hanazawa invests a lot in Mob. I know he knows Mob is really strong. We know Mob is really strong. But at the same time, you should at least pick up some of the slack. Am I the only one getting that feeling? that Hanna's always just like, hey, handle my lightweight. So Mob walks forward and almost instantaneously is forced downward due to the leader's gravity psychic powers. And then it is that we see the dopest move in all of this anime. Reagan Arataka's anti-esper dropkick. Done. Five stars. This anime is already five stars for me just for that move. I'm done. And to my surprise, he actually lays him out with this damn dropkick. He didn't stay down, but we'll get to that in a second. So then the big guy that took out Hanazawa last episode comes up and is like, oh, so you're gonna try and fight for him. And then Reagan proceeds to pull some Reaganomics, pulls out a Fabian coin and proceeds to claim that he is a hypnotist. And then we get the second dopest move in this anime, Hypnosis Punch, when Reagan literally distracts you with a coin and punches you right in your stupid face. And at this point I'm like, are we sure Reagan's not an Esper or the leader of Claw because he literally just took out two members of Claw. He didn't take them out, but he at least knocked them down. 
and I would think that you would have a barrier or something because he could have been hustling you guys the whole time just making you think he's not a psychic and he could have just pulled psychic powers out of nowhere you guys were that cocky but then Sakurai seeing the big dude get knocked down comes in with his katana and tries to kill Reagan and at this point Ishiguro gets up and the big dude get back up and we get glimpses of their powers and all the while Reagan's like hey let's talk about this then Ishiguro uses his black hole powers to try and suck him into a black hole but Mob ends up managing to save him and at this point Reagan has an epiphany that wow these guys are evil and I'm sitting here thinking you didn't figure that by the way they were kidnapping children so then shit starts to get real and breaks down and everybody's fighting everybody and oddly enough this is when I started getting irritated because Reagan is sitting here telling Mob don't stoop to the level we can run we can get out of here we can make it don't fight them and Hanazawa is sitting here telling him we need to fight them they're gonna catch us if we do try to run we need to take them out right here I'm sitting here on Hanazawa's side just like yeah let them fuck them up take them out now fuck Reagan take them out and all the while Mob is rising in percentage three at a time I believe until he gets to 99 and then right before he's about to hit 100 Reagan literally slaps him out of it like grabbing his face and says you don't need to do this you're the one that's gonna suffer if you do this it's alright to run so then it fades to white and then we get this flashback of Ma meeting Reagan for the first time saying he doesn't know how to control his powers he needs a tutor and he saw Reagan sign on the outside and this is where we get that whole people all are different some people are fat some people stink but at the end of the day, we're all human. Speech from Reagan, because he lied to mom and said, I used to have this problem when I was a kid. And I was like, wow, you started lying to him that early in the relationship. But at the same time, I see why he did it. He was trying to give mom a little confidence and whatnot. And Reagan basically sits him down and has this talk with him and tells him, essentially, just stay kind. And honestly, I think that molded Mob into who he is today because we've seen throughout the series, no matter what, no matter who's fucked with him, Mob has always stayed kind. And I think Reagan is to blame for that. So Reagan may be a hustler, Reagan may be a swindler, but he passed on a valuable lesson to Mob, which we see now. And then we get Android 16 dying by Cell's hand all over again because Sakurai comes down with his katana and slashes through Reagan. And I really think Reagan might be done for because if you look at the concrete, you can see a slash mark through it. And then we finally see Mob go 100 with the episode ending with him saying, Master, are you okay, Master? And that's actually a post credit scene too. He's still asking if you're all right. And then we see post credits that Mob's eyes are glowing red. We've never seen Mob's eyes glow red. We've seen them glow white. We've seen them glow yellow, if I'm not mistaken. We have never seen them glow red, so shit is about to go down. All in all, I tremendously enjoyed this episode because, like I said, we got to see a little bit more of Reagan's good person side instead of just the swindler and the hustler that we're used to. We got to see Ritsu actually, it looked like, come to terms with the fact that I was just being a jealous asshole and I'm going to be better now, we're all going to be cool. Hanazawa's stupid wig finally got cut and now he looks normal. And just flat out good action scenes and animation for that matter. It was a really good episode and I hate that next week's episode is the final episode. I'm pretty sure it is. And I don't know what I'm going to review afterwards guys. I really don't. If you have another anime for me to watch that's actually currently releasing, I'll try to catch up to it and review it weekly. I'll try to do something. But as always guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button right there, I think. Maybe over here. So, I don't know. It's, it's in this general area. <laughs> and please subscribe if you haven't already. Also, leave me a comment letting me know if you think Reagan is dead, what your favorite part of the episode was, if you enjoyed the episode, if you're heartbroken that the series is about to take a break after this next episode, what you're going to watch, all this kind of stuff. So, till next week, guys, I'm probably going to go comatose and get ready to mourn the loss of Reagan because I really think he's dead. Me personally, I really hope Reagan isn't dead because I like the dynamic between Mob and Reagan. I like what they bring to the table in this series because Reagan is a huge part of the comedic aspect to the show and if without him, I don't feel like anything's gonna compare to it. The only other person that comes to mind funny in this series is Tomei right away, just Tomei. But that's all I got for this episode, guys. I'll catch you right back here next week. Till then, I'm out.